I am Kim Tracy with the Maxwell James Agency. We are dedicated to connecting fantastic talent with appropriate conferences, trade shows, corporate workshops, seminars, and the like. And today our guest is Suzanne Tullian with the Brand Ascension Group. Welcome, thank goodness, we got you online. So if you could please tell us, high five exactly, um, tell us about yourself, where you are, and what your company is about. Oh, about myself. I'm in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Woohoo! One of the most beautiful areas in the United States, I must say. We have our Pikes Peak right here, so that's awesome. Um, I have a company called the Brand Ascension Group, and we are in. I'm in my 12th year this year wow. in helping companies identify and define who they are as a brand. We've developed a methodology called Brand DNA. And I help them flesh that out to position themselves with competitive advantage in the marketplace. So I do that with businesses as well as personal brands, emerging leaders, uh, independents, such as sales brokers or agents, okay. consultants, speakers, et cetera. Okay. And could you define for us, because we talked about it the other day, personal brand, because a lot of people confuse this with social media or marketing or what have you. Let's bring a little clarity to what the consumers do and do not know. Right. So that's usually the first piece of any workshop that I create or that I train on because that's I have people have to get beyond that that limited thinking that branding is marketing and they're one and the same. Um, so let's just define personal branding since kind of this major topic that we're talking about today is about personal branding. Personal okay. branding is really just a perception perception. Mm. So it it starts, it starts ideally with the person perception of themselves perception of themselves and okay. ultimately hits the external market, right? And then that's their perception of that person. I say ideally because most of us don't take control of the perception we want others to have of us or we haven't thought mm. through it. So that perception lives in the minds of our market and is determined by how we show up, how we act and we behave, how we speak, how we dress even. That's kind of the mm -hmm. marketing piece of branding. Mm -hmm. So when we think about um, perception, you know, how do we as human beings perceive? Mm. What do we use to perceive? What would you say? What do we use to perceive? It could be, I mean, you could, you could be at the gym and you could be look, watching somebody just walk, walk by you and they look like they have a world on their shoulders or a lot of people you can tell, you know, they are clearly not morning people. They should not be here at the gym at 30 in the morning <laughs> or, or, you know, maybe your friend is somebody speeding by you on the road and driving a bit recklessly and you don't know what's going on with them. Yeah, so we, we're looking at things, we're hearing things, we're tasting things, we're um, feeling things. So we perceive as human beings through perception or through our senses, Okay. right? Uh, we take in all this information, this data, we collect it and it helps us file things away. You mm -hmm. know, how, how we take it in. Is it cold in here? Is, is, do I like the, the tone of the voice of that person that's talking to me? Are they smiling? Do they shake my hand? Does it feel solid and confident? Mm -hmm. So all this sensitivity that we're getting from our, um, our senses, we're filing this information away subconsciously in our brains. Okay. And then we develop this perception of this person. Just within seven seconds, we're developing up to 11 different impressions of somebody. It's, wow. it's amazing. <laughs> I know that people start getting really paranoid about that statement because it's like, oh, well, then what am I giving off in these first seven seconds, right? But it doesn't stop there. People are constantly trying to get re reaffirmation, reaffirmation, reaffirmation. Okay. Do I trust this person, right? Mm -hmm. Do I trust this person? Do I trust, you know, 20 minutes in the conversation, do I trust this person? Do I trust this person? So we're constantly judging and creating perceptions based on what, what, that that other person is giving off. Wow. And you talk about developing a personal brand. What are the elements that are included when you are doing this creation? Well, in the in the brand DNA methodology, um, I've, I started that methodology with businesses and then finally decided that 
boy, these solo, there's so many solo professionals in America. You know, it's built on this entrepreneur kind of state, this foundation. So I, I redesigned the, the methodology to really speak to the personal brand as well. And the elements that are involved in that is fleshing out the core value system of what we, like who, what do you value mm -hmm. really? Like down to four, maybe five key core values that you have. And then not only just nailing that, because I have an exercise that helps people get real crystal clear on that. Okay. But not only just nailing down, like a, a core value might be, um, for me, one of my core values is transparency. I really value transparency. And so what does that mean? That means that I lean into people that are transparent, mm -hmm. right? I pick up on that. I want to be around those people. I am also looking for ways to be more transparent in what it is that I do because I value it. So think of your value system as things that you're like a magnet, you're attracted to, you lean into, okay. you want more of. Okay. So we not only identify those core values, but we define them. Okay. So what does transparency mean to me? Mm -hmm. Not to anybody else because it's my personal brand, okay. right? I'm not looking up Webster Dictionary definition of transparency. I'm defining it for me. Okay. And so once I can do that with all of my core values, I'm already beginning to create this really clear construct okay. of what I'm going to be able to now step into because it's conscious okay. in my brain. Okay. And I can be more like your previous guest. I could be more consistent in that. Right. So what, that's one element of the brand DNA process. Does this make sense? It does. Awesome. Like, what would you value? What's you one know, thing so you funny. know you value? I think that we have this in common, which is transparency and integrity. And mm -hmm. that is something that both of us recognized with, uh, within ourselves over a Skype conversation. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. What, we, what we were able to get on. So I think those are huge. And then, of course, trust, a while it may be overused, it is a really big foundation for me whenever I'm evaluating a speaker, whenever I'm evaluating an event, um, who are the people that you bring into your space or allow into your space. Yeah. So those are And you, you attract those people that you trust. Right. Right. And because you're leaning into that, you want more of that. And when you think about integrity and trust, what I would generally coach my students on is that you they're they're almost one in the same you know when mm -hmm. you think about them and so if they have five values and one of them's integrity and one is trust i mm -hmm. would say why don't you pick one of the two and let's say integrity is just kind of the top string of that and then weave in trust into the definition okay right because they're they're they can be one in the same or be very similar to where you'll have you'll allow yourself that other space for another core value okay but so values are very, very powerful. And people think that, oh, I've done that work. It's, you know, it's, it's personal identity 101. But I can guarantee you not many have really dug, dug mm -hmm. deep enough and really defined it well enough to get the clarity they need to actually step into those definitions okay. and really own it. Okay. okay. Right? So and that's pretty powerful. And this is you doing this work, not only on the personal side, but you're also doing it on the corporate side. I do. Yeah. And so values is just one piece of that element. But yeah. So think about what a company owns. This is a collective entity of you know umpteen employees that all have to buy into the same value set, this core value mm -hmm. set. Right. And truly understand what that value structure means. So imagine a company defining let's say they value profitability okay that's actually starbucks when the starbucks is values okay is profitability so look how they've actually taken that word and that value and leaned into creating profitability okay i mean out of everything that they do mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. so they took it they owned it they defined it now now they can step into that and actually action it Okay. Right. That's really powerful. Can you give us another story about where you have crafted personal brand with somebody? 
Oh, there's so many um, personal. So I work with not only just entrepreneurs who own their own businesses, but also emerging leaders within organizations okay. who who want to get to their next level, uncover maybe their leadership style mm -hmm. or their management style, whatever that is, and really lean into what that looks like for them so that they can harness it. And there are so there are just so many. Everybody's so different. You know, when they uncover that profile, which let's talk about the second element of a brand, the brand DNA mm -hmm. process is and this is the more fun piece. Okay. It's building out what I call your brand style attributes. Okay. And so your style is your approach to how you go about things. It's your natural, mm -hmm. innate approach, right? So your approach could be um, like mine is inquisitive. I'm I'm just constantly asking a ton of questions, right? And that's how I get to the bottom of things. And so I'm a questioner. Okay. I'm you know so that's my style and my approach, but. But there's four or five of these style attributes that help define my construct. Okay. And when I define what inquisitive actually means for me, the clarity there helps me um, implement that into everything that I do. Okay. To become more of who I say I am. Right? Yep. So when I've got that construct, and this is the thing, I've when you have that clarity, clarity is the basis for action. And without doing the work and the due diligence, you don't, you're like muddled. Mm. And it's my brand is foggy, mm -hmm. right? I don't really understand my brand yet. Mm -hmm. Or I might know it up here, kind of, mm -hmm. sort of, but do I know it well enough to act in it every single day and everything that I do so that others pick up on that? Right. 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 Yeah. And how can personal branding help improve somebody's self-image? The self-image of themselves. So it, mm -hmm. it often will help shift their self-esteem because they're uncovering these core elements about who they really are authentically. It's not about putting labels on and like, I wanna be this and I wanna be this, but rather this is who I am, how do I leverage it? Okay. Right. And how great is it for me to be this? So it's pretty powerful when people uncover these particular attributes, how they start believing in themselves in a different way. OK. And it's, it's just it, their whole self-esteem begins to shift, especially when we get to the differentiators part of the brand DNA process. When I really take this deep dive and uncover who I am and what makes me different. And I find these things that I haven't thought about in forever, I, I haven't really remembered or got conscious with in a long time. I, I realize I'm, I'm pretty damn cool, you know? <laughs> it's amazing what happens. So it starts elevating your own perception of yourself when you realize all the things that you actually can bring to the table and, and then then we get into the, what we call the standards of living when it comes to personal branding. And I want to mention too, that when we brand, we're not just branding the entrepreneur in the, in the business that they're in, we're branding the person. Mm -hmm. So we are, we, what they're doing for themselves is something that they're doing in every facet. I call it the gestalt theory, okay. right? It's going to affect and they affect their community, they work in, they play in, their friends, mm -hmm. their relationships, their mm -hmm. family life. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect all of this. Okay. So we have so, a comment coming in from Missouri, west of St. Louis. Ralph is saying to you that clarity is power. Would you agree? It is power. It is. Mm -hmm. Well, it's power because you can action clarity. And so when you action something, you have power. It's empowering. Yes, very, very, very well said. Mm -hmm. So let's say that a person decides to create a personal brand in order to differentiate himself or herself, um, express personal values and personality. How long does it take to build a brand that delivers those results? Okay, so that's interesting. Um, how long does it take? How long does it take for you to buy into something, right? If, if I say, and I've uncovered myself as being transparent, 
um, that I value transparency, I value spontaneity, I value growth and evolution. These are the things that I value. Mm -hmm. And my style is efficient. I'm, I'm an efficiency just monger, right? I, I see, <laughs> yeah, I am. I see all the ways things can be more efficient. I, you know, I watch my husband pick up the one plate from the table and walk all the way into the kitchen. And instead of like three more things he could be carrying. So I, I know that about myself, right? So if I am that way, how can I leverage my efficiencies in my world? Mm -hmm. And as soon as I buy into, yeah, that resonates with me, I am efficient, then I can, I can be clearer about stepping into that. So it's as long as it takes for me to uncover mm -hmm. and name, because once we name something, we can action it, right? Right. It, we get this consciousness of it. So na naming is a huge part of this process. So as soon as we name it and it does resonate with us and that it feels authentic, mm -hmm. that's when we start stepping into it. Okay. So it can happen overnight, mm -hmm. literally. So it literally depends on the person and how or where they are in their life at that moment in their development of their brand and how authentic it is to th for them. Because mm. if it's not authentic, then we're, we're playing a game yep. that is, is not going to be sustainable. Yep. Yep. Right. We're going to give it up because it's not who we are. Mm -hmm. It's going to be short term. We have to believe in it. Mm -hmm. And that's what this brand DNA process actually does. It helps you get to that bottom line authenticity that like, you're like, this is me. Right. Let's start creating my environment so that it enables me to be more of this that right. I've defined. Very good, very good. Yeah. It reminds me of a saying called lost, lost in the sauce. <laughs> if the person is not ready, this doesn't happen, period, right? Yeah, when a student is ready, the teacher will come, right? Yeah, yes, very, very good, <laughs> very good. And then you get the, you know, here you go, I'm your teacher. So how can one assure that the brand is going to be well-received? So I, my, my suggestion is there are three, three characteristics that are um, common in highly successful brands. Three character, after you've design, designed your brand DNA, you've got these attributes, right, that make up your DNA. Then there's three characteristics that you layer on top of these attributes. And one of them is consistency, mm -hmm. right? Consistency builds trust. The more consistent you are in, I'm just keep using the example of myself, that I'm transparent or that I'm efficient or that I show that I believe in growth and evolution, you know, that I show up that way, that I say that I am, the more trust I'm bringing to the table. And so that's, that's a, a successful characteristic of a brand is that people begin to trust mm -hmm. because they have an expectation of you and a perception of you to show up in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Trust creates history, history forms tradition, tradition builds rituals, right? So when you get to the ritual state of your followers and that, you know, they see you as this ritual they follow, mm -hmm. then you become this kind of epitome of this brand that they, you're the go-to brand. Right. right. The second one is distinction. That's the second characteristic of the most successful uh, personal brands, distinction. We all know this is kind of a duh Duh. Well, yeah. So we go through this whole um, exercise and doing a deep dive into differentiation. And this is just you get really deep and you realize how incredibly talented you are <laughs> and things that you've done and you've accomplished and the way you go about things. And, you know, when you begin to understand how you can outbehave your competition in, in business or in play or whatever, out behave your competition, then that's the secret sauce mm. in creating that distinction, how people define you from somebody else. I mean, we all have friends that we know, oh, they're always late, right? Or we have friends that are always the life of the party. That's their MO. Mm -hmm. That's their brand, mm -hmm. right? How can they begin to leverage those types of things? And then What's the third? Third one is interesting. And it's a, a word we don't use very often in just in layman's terms. It's called being generative. And so what I mean by being generative in this characteristic is that we're constantly um, finding new ways 
through technology, through brand vocabulary, through our behaviors to show up more and more and more of who we say we are. Okay. So we're, we're reinventing ourselves mm -hmm. within the scope of our DNA. Mm -hmm. We're getting better and better and better and better and better at being who we are. And so I call that what happens, what tends to happen psychologically is that we become more internally driven, mm -hmm. meaning we're making up decisions based on what our core values are and what we believe instead of what I call being externally impacted. Okay. And being driven by society or driven mm -hmm. by the what the peanut gallery out right. there, right? The, the bays. Yeah. And I just feel so much more power empowered internally because I'm driven more internally because I know who I am. Correct. And that's this whole self-esteem issue, right? That you were talking right. about. Right. Everything is up leveled, up yep. level, up level, the more we dig into clarity. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Ralph has a question for you. He says, as he continues to speak at larger venues, should he create a brand or logo? Okay, so let's, uh, I'm gonna tackle that for you, Ralph. First of all, a logo is not a brand. A logo is just an icon that represents your brand. Think about that. It's just the icon that represents the brand. So the brand lives behind the meaning of the icon. So if I develop an icon, do I have a brand that is going to be, be seen and felt and heard through my style of speaking? so that when people finally see that icon, they're gonna get your brand, mm -hmm. okay? So it's always good to have an icon that distinguishes and it connects the brand to the image, mm -hmm. right, and vice versa. So if, you know, with McDonald's, imagine McDonald's not having an icon of the M, right, and just being a hamburger place. <laughs> they couldn't separate, the, but now that we look at the McDonald's emblem it makes us feel a certain way because we've experienced it right and we know what that emblem means okay so i hope that answered your question but understand that the logo is not the brand it's what the logo means mm -hmm. it's the perception the logo gives off that's the brand so have you defined the brand that's the answer okay Good. What if somebody's personal brand does not deliver the intended results? Number one, how do they know? And then what do they do about it? Yeah. So what the biggest mistake and in, in when that happens, it's because that person is not truly living who they say they are mm. and they're not seeing it right? They're, they're, they've created something that they either can't live up to or they don't fully buy into. You know, the, it's not authentic to them. They want to be somebody else, so to speak, mm -hmm. and they can't sustain it. So it's showing up as inauthentic to the audience. That's generally when, when it gets you know, kind of pushed back mm -hmm. from the audience. And also on the flip side of that, understand that no brand is universal. So we can't create a brand that everybody's going to love. Mm -hmm. Everybody, right? When we create a brand, we're literally um, targeting a market that appreciates that. So when we target, right, we get rid of other people. So we're at, while we're targeting, we're, we're discluding mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. So you're going to find that the more and more and more you step into your authenticity, that you're going to be targeting and targeting and targeting and targeting until you can get the highest quality people that get who it is and appreciate who it is that you are and what you deliver. And you're going to also get, uh, have people step away from that too, mm -hmm. that don't get that and don't want that and don't appreciate it. But that's a okay. good thing. Mm -hmm. It's a very good thing. Mm -hmm. Because the, the next question that you had sent me was that in a way is how you assure that that personal brand is received because you are either exactly attracting or not attracting the right people, whether it's for your business or what have you. 
Right. And it, you know, you stop wasting time with people that don't get it. Mm -hmm. You get highly targeted with people that do appreciate it. And it just makes life so much easier. You can increase your price points when, if it's a business situation, Okay. Um, your value proposition gets increased. Mm -hmm. Everything is, is up leveled. Okay. Very very good. Yeah. So how does one leverage personal brand to deliver memorable interactions and how important is that for either an individual or a corporation? So memorable interactions come from what I call multisensorial experiences. <laughs> and I know it's it's a little technical, but when you think about how we as human beings perceive, we perceive through our senses, mm-hmm. right? And I don't think enough of us are taking advantage of the opportunity to create smells mm. that will get people remembering us, right? Okay. Whether it's a perfume or you've got a training room that always has citrus scent in it or whatever that might be, right? What is your smell? Okay. Right? Um, sound is another thing. You know, we are highly auditory. Most of us are highly auditory in this day and age, of course. And so what kind of sound is associated with our brand? The visuals is another mm-hmm. huge aspect. And it goes to what Ralph was talking about, right? Our visual brand. Mm-hmm or visual graphics that represent our brand Mm -hmm. have to be consistent all the way through because consistency builds trust. And when we show up from our website to our business card, to our collateral materials, to, you know, our, our, how we dress and how we promote ourselves, all those things have to come together and look like what I think they should look like because I've done business with you. Okay. Instead of ask, instead of have me as a consumer question. Right. Right. You know, if that's really, is that really Kim? I'm, I'm not sure she looks different, you know, you know what I mean? You want them to just get it right then and there. So cre- really looking at that whole scope of multisensorial experience when it comes to representing who you are as a brand okay, um, is very, very important for creating the memorable experiences. What damage control do you recommend if a personal brand doesn't deliver the positive perception? Yeah. So like, let's, let's think of, um, you know, a few people in this day and age that have kind of created, you know, created a a brand Mm -hmm. and then what we thought was this person and Mm -hmm. then found out later. And I I feel weird mentioning names. We all can think of, you know, celebs and Mm -hmm. people in the media that have done things like that. Mm -hmm. The the quickest way to to begin the repair of that is to um, come out be transparent, be authentic, you messed up, you know, and really acknowledge um, the, the, the mistake or whatever it might've been to be outside of who you say yourself to be. Right. Mm -hmm. And then start over. You have to just start over. Um, I I mean, I've got four names in my head right now that I I just, I don't want to mention names on (laughs) video, but you know, People have gone to jail. They've been, you know, accused of, of misuse of drugs. You know, I mean, all kinds of things that that were really big, high, um, profile celebrities that we we really looked up to. Okay. So repairing okay. starts from admitting that you made okay. a mistake, mm. and that you get right back into the game and you commit, you recommit, 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 recommit to who you say you are. And you find okay. ways to show up that way and out behave your competition. Okay. Yeah. We have a caller coming. Question. We have a viewer actually in the Netherlands watching you right now. And she had said, is it time that you're focusing on a different market as well? Is it time that you're focused? Um, yeah, because your comment is time to focus on a different market in response to that question. It could be. Um if you if you really mess up though, um, I'm not sure what market would would accept you, (laughs) you know, if you really messed up and stayed in that vein Mm -hmm. um, with, without coming full certain coming transparent and and really starting over, but there's always an opportunity to think about your market Mm -hmm. and what, and I call that pivoting, Mm -hmm. right? We're going to pivot and, and re it's not necessarily really rebranding, but re understanding how you want to show up Again, again, and it has to be authentic. Because, so, when we when we brand a company or a person, it's a bit different than when we brand a product. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Apple for Apple fans, 
they can build anything and the Apple fan will buy it, right? It doesn't matter what product you sell or you, what you create because they've built such a solid, trustworthy, highly innovative um, brand perception that they're they're trusted. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't care what their next product is, I'm gonna go buy it. <laughs> <laughs> because you're called a loyalist. <laughs> yeah, true, true. And loyalty comes out of trust. Yep. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a ritual thing. It is. It is. So how important is it to integrate a brand into one's daily life? And if it's important, how do you accomplish that goal? Uh-huh. Well, incorporating, like I, I've been preaching actually for this whole 20 minutes or so that we've been on, um, that you have to walk your talk. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's why 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 consciously brand yourself if you're not going to commit to walking the talk? So the, the it's a big commitment, mm -hmm. but you have to think about it all the time. So when my, my students get done with their brand DNA process, they laminate the one sheet that they come up with, which there's a lot more depth that ends up being in this, what I call the official brand DNA handbook. But they laminate this real quick one sheet reference sheet and they put it everywhere. Okay. So that they're constantly looking at it. They're they're rereading their definitions of what their attributes are so that they really can begin to become it more and more and more. And again, it, it is a daily process. It's about sitting back and thinking, okay, I'm getting ready to have this meeting. How can I show up more authentically mm. in this meeting? You know, I'm inquisitive, right? So I'm gonna ask a ton of questions because mm -hmm. I love asking questions and I'm not going to be inhibited by the other person or whatever. This is who I am and this is what I'm going to do. Right. So you commit to that. So yeah, it's very important. Yes. And for those who don't know Suzanne personally, I call her the blonde bombshell because <laughs> you will ask any question at any time. She's just going to, she's just going to go for it. So practice the duck and cover drill is what I say. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So if, if I'm interested in taking action to identify and define my personal brand, what tools are available for me to do so? Right. So the brand DNA tool that I offer is the Ignite Your Personal Brand Presence. And I'm getting ready to change the name of that, too. But it, it is a I have an I offer a personal one on one individual coaching program. It's a six month program. And then we'll go through the whole process and we'll start implementation. So the whole process will probably take us a month and a half. Okay. And then we spend the rest of the time actually applying your DNA into everything that you're doing. Okay. So you start really stepping into that. Okay. And the other, the other side of that is um, I have a personal brand mastermind group program where there's a collection of people up to seven in a group at a time. So it's still pretty intimate. Okay. But we're sharing more and I'm coaching each and one of you individually, but yet in a group. And so you get exponential coaching because you're hearing me coach others. Right. And that's also a six month program, okay. but it's all on my website under the tab brand DNA. You'll see a drop down. It goes to the solopreneur or the mastermind. OK. And you also are doing a workshop that's coming up, correct? I am doing a lots of workshops. <laughs> Um, I, and I have them because I know that this this video is going to be running, you know, maybe indefinitely. I'm not sure. But I have workshops all over, you know, that I travel to or up in Denver or here in the Colorado Springs area. Um, one is called Stop Marketing, Start Branding. Mm -hmm. And it's it kind of goes to that question of what are we doing, marketing or branding? Well, you've got to market a brand. So you've got a brand first and mm -hmm. then you go market it. Mm -hmm. Right. So I explain that whole differentiation and really get my audience's crystal clear. Right on the, the differences and how they can leverage both of them. Another one is called branded customer chemistry. Okay. And this is how we can begin applying our systems and processes in customer service to who we say we are as a brand. You know, what are the, all the elements in our brand DNA? How do we Im infiltrate those and implement those into our delivery of service, which is really fun and powerful, highly experiential. Okay. And then, um, there's elevate your personal brand. And this is that personal brand mm -hmm. piece mm -hmm. um, that I just do a whole personal brand, like quick two hour workshop, mostly for real estate agents okay. and brokers and consultants, those types of, of things. Okay. But so many more. I'm, I'm also a certified trainer. Mm -hmm. So I have a, a be a better speaker workshop Great. that helps uh, those budding speakers become better at controlling their environment. So they enlist, equip and engage their audiences. Exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah. And the last question that we're going to cover today is how can a person sustain their personal brand presence? They just have to be conscious of it. Oh. They have to look at it every single day and they have to say, I have a, I have a daily manifestation um, sheet that I get my students also to, to work on. And every day they look at it, spend five minutes and they go through and, and figure out which attribute they're really going to focus on that day because of certain things that they may have going on. And it really helps them stay conscious. And so it's about thinking about it, looking mm -hmm. at it, um, just becoming it, being committed to doing it mm -hmm. every single day and being more and more internally driven right. and less and less externally impacted. Right. So instead of your life going like this all the time because you're externally impacted by whatever the heck's going on out there, you're more like this. Right. Just cruising along. <laughs> I understand. I understand. And finally, because we're going to wrap it up, um, what are the other um, items that you train on that you haven't mentioned thus far? I do one called um, developing a world class brand on a small business budget. Mm. That's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I may I may bring that back into the webinar world. Maybe do that again in webinar. I love training on site and live yep. because I'm highly experiential and we have a mm -hmm. lot of fun. But I might yep. start bringing those um, back onto the webinar environments. And if people are interested in doing something like that, they can get on my list by just uh -huh. going to I've got a free Kickstarter package tool. OK, actually. Um, for people to sign up to on my website, brandascension.com, and they can get on that. They'll get in my list, and I'll just send out invites. If they're interested, they can join me. Perfect. Very good. Well, thank you yeah. so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. And the video will, video will be uploaded to our YouTube channel as well, which is Maxwell James Agency Speakers. And thank you so much. Thank you. And thanks, Kim, for your um, agency. Uh, she's got an awesome agency. Check it out, Maxwell James Agency. And thank you to everybody that joined us today. Absolutely. We will talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.